ROV Hercules was taking samples about 3,000 meters deep on an unnamed seamount when we came across what we thought were just typical ferromanganese coated rocks. It turns out it was something more. It wasn't until we got these samples back to University of Rhode Island's Marine Geological Samples Laboratory that we realized that what was inside one of these was actually a fossilized megalodon tube. Naturally, we passed it off to experts around the world to study, and today we get to connect with some of them to hear some updates on this tooth. Thank you for joining us today, uh, Nico and Jurgen. Um, we're really excited to talk about the megalodon tooth, but why don't you introduce yourselves to our audience? Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation to give this interview. I'm uh, Nicolas Straube from the University Museum in Bergen. I'm the curator of the Ichthyological collection there, and my research interest is in sharks. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Jürgen Pollersbeck. I'm an independent researcher. I'm, I'm interested in fossil shark teeth. I'm also an editor of a scientific database, sharkreferences.com. So we're here to talk about this megalodon sample. What can you tell us about the sample and who it belonged to? Well, the megalodon was a rather large predatory shark, um, similar in, in, in shape, let's say, and appearance to a white shark, but much larger. It was estimated to up to 18 meters. Megalodon sharks live about um, 18 million years back uh, until 3.5 million years. And so we can say that the, the, the shark tooth was about minimum 3.5 million years old. So the sample is a fossil tooth or part of a fossil tooth. It is an upper jaw tooth, which is uh, visible by small curvature of the tip of the crown. Another, another important morphological character is the broad crown. Uh, upper tooth are broad and uh, lower tooth are on the base six small. The most special thing about sharks are certainly their teeth. So sharks have a cartilaginous skeleton, which is not fossilized very often. But sharks replace their teeth a whole life long. So we have a lot of uh, fossil shark teeth. And the main reference for those are living species, of course, because they can tell you a lot about their ecology, in conclusion, their behavior, their prey, and so on. Based on the tooth morphology of the megalodon, for example, uh, it resembles a lot uh, the white shark. The white shark, for example, uses its serrated teeth to cut out pieces from whale carcasses, and the megalodon has the same serration of teeth. In fact, there are fossil whale bones showing megalodon teeth imprints. That's so fascinating. How do you go about reconstructing what you have and using what you have to estimate the entire size of the tooth or even of the individual? So um, what we have is, of course, the crown height, and this is the decisive variable you need to fill in a formula which is used to estimate the former total length. And this is based on, on shark teeth from still living species. The fossil tooth we found may have been um, from a shark of about only 7.5 meters. Still large, but it's considered a subadult specimen. In regards to studying fossilized teeth, these are from millions of years ago, and you're studying animals that have huge geographic ranges. But for this sample, we know exactly where it was picked up off of the ocean floor. Does that change anything? What does that mean to you as a scientist? I think for Megalodon, it's no surprise to find uh, Dutch teeth uh, in, in the Pacific Ocean because Megalodon lives worldwide. And there we find on every, marine sediments of the world, uh, such teeth. So the exactly place is no surprise. I think the specialty in this tooth finding is that it was uh, basically discovered in situ, like lying on the deep sea floor. And uh, normally when such teeth are found in the deep sea, which is rare enough, they are brought up on board a ship uh, using, for example, a grab. So a kind of invasive sampling method. And here we have documented the deposition of that tooth on the seafloor. And this is a, a special thing because now we have the information on uh, what this tooth may have experienced or not, and some environmental factors which may have led to the deposition on the seafloor. And normally this information is, is completely lacking. Why do you think the public and people in general are just so fascinated by Megalodon and by sharks? I think Megalodon is a top predator. It's uh, the biggest shark ever lived. 
I think uh, a fish with 80 meters length is fascinating. Yeah, I, I agree that the, the pure size is intimidating. Um, it's it's whale sized, <laughs> um, but given that it was a predator with uh, enormous teeth and enormous bite force, I think uh, this interest in that species is, is just uh, fascinating. Is there anything you're hoping that we might find out in the region this year that would be super exciting to you? Well, based on what we know now, if we go to spots with a similar environmental factors, maybe more shark teeth are found. <laughs> so this discovery could theoretically help us discover even more species that existed millions of years ago. Maybe the traces they left, yes. <laughs> are there any other statements that you want to say, certain points that you want to make? I can, I'll let you say that now. We, we like sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you to Nico and Jurgen for joining us today to talk about this amazing deep sea find. And thank you to all of you who continue to watch our ocean exploration exploits across the world. You can follow along through social media and of course on NautilusLive.org where you can watch in real time as we explore the deep sea. 